Hello and welcome everybody to 1974. Gary Player won the Masters, and Jack Nicholas had lots of control at McGregor at the time. There's the VIP irons by Jack Nicholas. They were cast stainless steel, right? Because Ping was doing it, so everybody else needs to jump on board and do that. So I, I believe Penna came back to McGregor. It was just like an all-star cast at McGregor. But if the VIP was their top of the line and it was cast stainless steel, this was their maybe highest rated forged pro line iron. Forge Club Tourney Custom. Now, this is the 985 iron from 1974 and it was in production for what, four years, I think? Absolutely phenomenal iron. The problem with this will be discussed after we have a closer look at the review table. These are easy to recognize. Turney Custom, don't confuse it with the Tommy Armour autograph. The 985 here on the top toe part. I want to show you the toe profile because it does show you how kind of how this top profile is a little bit thicker. And so it kind of has this little, I don't know if I want to call it a cavity, but kind of this like wedge cutout through the length of the iron. So to me, a good looking and a good, it feels really good. I mean, this iron just feels absolutely amazing. On the sole, it does say McGregor and there's the iron number. I already showed you the heel. The serial number is on the ferrule right here. Beautiful looking club. The interesting thing about the grooves is that they do have this groove right here on the sides as well. Help frame that up. Really good looking frame, really good looking at a dress. Uh, there might be a little bit of offset here. Does that look like offset to you? Uh, maybe a little bit. And then you can see the ferrule, it's uh, silver, red, silver, red, silver pattern, stripe pattern on that. Stepped shaft, this is a Dynamic Gold S500, is that focusing? And you can see my notes here, 1974. Victory grip, grip right, swing right. Love these classic grips, they were popular for so long. And that only leaves us with one thing left to do. Let's get this out on the range, which I did last year. Let's roll that footage. So when I hit this thing in that video, right afterwards, I was just looking at this thing, just like, what has the golf world been doing for the last 50 years? Manufacturers, what are you doing? Hello, hey, hey, what are you doing in there? What have you been doing? Because all the modern blades feel just like this. What can I, I can't think of a single modern iron blade that I would say is heads and shoulders above this. You look at the Mizunos, the Titleists, you know, it's just like, they're just slight variations of this. They, yeah, they, they tweak this and that, you know, for whoever. I know that Titleist got some criticism because they put some offset in there. But I mean, this is spectacular. This is an amazing blade. By the way, on eBay, I saw these sell for under $100 a set. Three to nine. I think one was three to 10 or was it pitching? Three to 10, I think. Either way, they were like under $100. With shipping, it's like 70 bucks, $15 shipping. Throw some tax in there, you're still under $100 at the making of this video. I hope I don't influence the market, but these are amazing when it comes to golf blades. They look spectacular. They're so beautiful. Now, this channel, 
is not about <laughs> improving your golf scores or robot testing and with hundreds of thousands of data and all these data are gonna tell us that this is the best. That's not what we're about here. We're about having fun in recreational golf and passion and excitement, okay? So in 1974, McGregor, Jack Nicholas has their stainless steel variety. And then we have this, which is, you know, the nicest forged iron they have, the blade that they have at the time. And then they have, you know, some persimmon and a lot of laminate woods. Huh. McGregor, was the 70s kind of the a down a decade for, the, for McGregor? I don't know, but I know personally, I'm more excited about some things coming out of Wilson or, you know, Walter Hagen than these per se. I know Ben Hogan, the director came out the same year. That's an exciting, interesting club that catches my eye. That's exciting. So where does this leave this? I, 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 this? These are the clubs that I hate because technically this is an amazing club. But when it comes to like fun, you can have fun with this, but that's on you. Not the, it's not something that catches my eye that makes me feel special or excited. It's just, oh, this is the template that we've been following for the last 50 years for a solid player iron. And if that's what you're looking for, then here you go. Here's a cheap version of it. But that's not what I'm looking for. So if you give me the choice by Ben Hogan Director or this, I'm choosing the Ben Hogan Director all day, every day. Uh, what about uh, Hague Ultra? Hague Ultra all the way. Even some of the stainless options like Ultradine. You know, Ultradines were pretty interesting back in the day. So, yes, I would put this in my bag in a heartbeat. But then I'm left with this conundrum because it's like, well, I want a good wood. I want a solid persimmon, but I don't want a McGregor laminate. And that leaves me where in the 70s? You see, you see the problem with my thinking and with this club? So what would you pair? If you got a set of these, what would you pair them with? Lots of the more available and affordable persimmons today were made in the 80s, which is in the future for this thing. Does that make sense? So 70s, Wilson's laminate, McGregor laminate. What's what? All right. So, what exciting driver or woods would you match this with? I'm interested to read in the comments below. I think McGregor still made some persimmons in the '70s. Would you try to find one of those? I don't know. You know, a couple years later, TaylorMade was coming out with their Pittsburgh persimmon. That's in the '70s. That might work. And yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Just not 100% sure on this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. A couple of things. Do you feel like modern blades are leaps and bounds above blades from the 60s and 70s? And why? I want to know why. Uh, you really, I, in my opinion, it's like you really need robot testing, you know, to get down to the nitty gritty. And a lot of it's personal preferences of tour pros. So that's my opinion, my thoughts. I want to know yours in the comments below. The second is what would you pair or how would this fit in your set? I want to know everything, the woods, the, you know, obviously they're talking about these irons and then what kind of putter would you throw in with this in the 70s? It's a fun exercise. As usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. I'm accepting general support on Patreon. So I just post a few behind the scenes pictures and updates on there. And you can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I have some golf accessories and stuff on there. You can visit my Amazon shop in the links in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.